Well, the first thing that I seem to remember about the Second World War is the day that war was actually declared officially. And uh, I would be five year old at that time. And I do remember going down to Saltburn with my mother and Auntie Connie and um, going on to the beach uh, just below Huntcliffe and uh, having a yacht to play with. And um, I think I just started to play with this yacht <coughs> when my mother learned from somebody that war had been declared and uh, she became rather panicky about it and felt that we ought to go home. My auntie was um, not quite so panicky, but um, I was persuaded to leave the yacht in a bathing hut, which uh, was in a row of bathing huts just at the bottom of Huntcliffe. And um, Auntie Connie wanted to let me bring it home. But my mother, <laughs> who seemed again to be very worried, decided that I should leave it there and uh, <laughs> possibly, well she wouldn't think about it at the time, uh, come back for it later, which of course <laughs> it was impossible because the pier at Saltburn uh, after war had been declared was off limits to the public and the beach had barbed wire across it <laughs> and uh, possibly this was the last time we were able to go down to the coast. Yeah. Um, about okay what, what were your memories of uh, I mean obviously you've heard it from <laughs> yes from your parents but what were your memories regarding Archie well I remember my father always feeling that um, losing his uh, eldest brother Archie so near to the end of the First World War was really tragic Archie uh, had been killed four days before armistice was signed at the end of the second of the first world war this was in 1918 and archie was killed on the 7th of november and the as we know from remembrance day remembrance sunday is on the 11th archie had been a second lieutenant in the king's own yorkshire light infantry and towards the end of the war, obviously, he was called up. He had been at um, a grammar school at Cotham in Redcar, and he was the only one of my dad's brothers, and there were nine or ten of them originally, who had been paid for. In those days, education was not free, and uh, his mother and father had only been able to fund Archie to go to grammar school. From the sixth form, obviously, he was called up in the summer of 1918. And I have seen pictures of a training camp in Yorkshire somewhere, where obviously he was getting ready to be sent to the front. Um, because he had A-levels, my father said, and well-educated, he was officer material. So on November the 7th, when he was killed, the sad thing was that negotiations for armistice were taking place somewhere in a caravan between German and British generals. The armistice was already being arranged when at the last minute he was killed. There was a final push to gain territory before the armistice uh, came into being and he was killed by a German shell in France and buried in a cemetery, war cemetery over there and he's remembered on a memorial at Cotham School but um, it was a terrible blow obviously for his mother and the family and it was something that my father always said he'd been used as cannon fodder because the public school officers in the army during the First World War, many of the junior ranks had been killed. Second lieutenants and lieutenants suffered uh, tremendously. The Germans, of course, would target the officer in charge of uh, his men, and uh, many of them never survived. 
So uh, it was just very, very unlucky that Archie was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Do you know whereabouts it was where he was killed? Somewhere in, Ypres? Somewhere in France. <coughs> no, that was earlier on, Paul. It was just somewhere in France. Right. I think there are details, but I've never been able to pin it down. Julie wanted to know as mm. well. Yes. How, how did that affect his, uh, his mother and father then and his brothers? Oh, tremendously. Um, shortly after that, his, his mother apparently never got over it and, and died at a young age. I think she was only in her 40s or 50s and um, took it very, very badly. <clears throat> All that was sent home was his officer's uh, Sam Brown belt and uh, because he'd just been blown to pieces. As happens in Afghanistan, you know, pieces of the body were just all that was left because the German shells and the, the big guns over there were so tremendously uh, destructive. So uh, that it was a terrible blow for the family. My mother was working in the post office at Grangetown at that time and she remembers having to take the message down and arrange for the telegram to be sent because they, in a small area like Grangetown they all knew each other yeah. and of course my mother had married uh, one of Archie's brothers, but it was something that always remained with them. Mm. Mm. Okay, I think that'll do. Is there anything else on there that you? I've got a bit about. Um, oh, about home and metal railings and things, ration books and oh, collections. I right, so those were the other sort of effects of. Uh, collect. I used to collect shrapnel and cap badges and things like that. Um, just, I'm just trying to find out the most interesting bits. Oh, I can say a bit about the high school when I. Yeah. Oh the, yeah. So okay. the, the effects of the war on, on yeah. schooling. And yeah, that's like that. right. Yeah. How how did that work then? Well, in 1945, after just after the war, I I passed the scholarship luckily to go to the boys' high school. But obviously during the war the, the schools had been uh, quite upset and some schools were closed and in fact I didn't start school um, when I should have done in 1939 because um, it was thought that children together in a school would be, uh, it would be too dangerous for them. So there were classes um, arranged in, in pupils' homes and in our house there was a little group that met uh, uh, with an infants teacher for some time before it was uh, felt safe that you could go to school. But when I went to school, at Martin Grove School, a junior school, I had to take a gas mask with me. And that was in a little, I remember in a green tin, a cylindrical tin, and you had to walk and carry that and bring it back in, in case uh, there was a gas attack. Remember that the First World War, a lot of gas was used in the trenches and it injured a lot of our servicemen. And there was a worry in the Second World War that gas would be used again, and actually it wasn't. But we were prepared for that. At the high school, when I was able to start the senior school, the teachers were just coming back from the war. I remember a Major Penberthy, who was a French teacher, Rumour had it that he'd been in intelligence because he was a French teacher and uh, obviously he would uh, be suitable to, to help in, in war work. The high school boys themselves, a party, were evacuated to Barnard Castle out in the country with a teacher called Tommy Goff, who uh, later became deputy head at the high school, and he looked after the boys uh, who were thought to be safer because they were living in the country. So things were really just returning to normal in 1945. Uh, Some women graduate teachers were still working at the high school and they had been taking over the jobs of the male teachers who were serving in the war and uh, so that took to some time for things to settle down again. But it certainly did disrupt, the war did disrupt quite a lot of areas of your life. Okie doke. Okay. Looks good. Is that alright? Yep. Good.